Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk. And this is just a quick little update on the um, Amstrad um, PCW project. The, um, getting this little Amstrad PCW um, main board up and running and booting and being able to do things with it. And I've just been basically having a bit of a play around. The first problem with this is um, was video output. Because these don't output basically they don't output composite video they have put a video um, signal and a sync signal and you have to combine them together to get a composite um, output from it now what I have been warned I've been looking online on um, a few discussions on these um, PCWs and namely using these outside the actual computer and it has been mentioned that it's very unwise to try and drive the signals you need directly off um, that there basically the video signals are generated by um, let's call it the ULA it's not a ULA but it's basically the same type of thing it's a um, CPLD or something like that it's a little um, custom chip that basically um, I think it does the, like the video the memory management um, it creates the video signal I think it creates the tone for the beeper and all sorts of little um, wonderful things and what I've been told is if you try and drive video directly off it you'll kill that chip and I really really don't want to kill that for one of two reasons one I'd hate to have to replace it because it's horrible soldering all these tiny pin pit, thin pin pictures on that um, two I haven't got a clue where I'd actually get a replacement for that for one of these Amstrad PCW boards so if I kill that I'll basically the board scrap I mean it's still worth the quid I paid for it just for the RAM and the CPU and uh, what have you off it but I don't want to do that I want to actually um, do something with this board so what I've done is I've cobbled together, um, can you see this? Oh, yeah, you uh, I've cobbled together this little circuit here. It's very, very simple. Basically all it does is it uses a couple of transistors as buffers. Um, so we take the signal, we're not really pulling anything off the signal, we're just taking the signal, buffering it with a couple of transistors, and then we're combining the um, sync pulse and the video pulse together to give us a composite signal out it's dirty it's nasty but it um it does well at least it does work it works uh, well enough for this initial testing obviously i'm going to have to do something a little bit better if we get further on in this project but it does sort of do for initial testing uh what i've also done is i've used base so basically this connection here is our um, video output that is actually the keyboard connector and i'm cheating a little bit at the moment what i'm doing is um, I've this board needed five volts to drive it, so I've basically put the p five volts for everything into here, and then feeding the five volts back down here um, through the keyboard connector to power the rest of the um, board up. The um, data and clock lines for the keyboard connector I've just brought over to this board, and um, if I do get a keyboard, someone has mentioned um, one of my uh, one of my viewers has mentioned that they may have a keyboard which um, they'd be willing to part with which if um, that's the case would be absolutely wonderful but what uh, the plan would be basically is I'll stick the keyboard connector on there and I can pick the data and clock lines up for it I just need a four pin DIN mounted on there and then I can power the board up um, nice and easily I'm just feeding five volts into the board and um, what I've um, done is um, I dug this out uh, basically, I, I'm not sure what you meant to get up on screen um, with the Amstrad PCW. It's a very, very, very long time since I even used one at all. I have repaired a few back in the very late 90s, basically when they were already obsolete. And it was only the die-hard users were uh, sticking hold of them and they would refuse to get rid of their um, Amstrad PCW in the favour of a PC. I had one person up until probably the mid 2000s, 2005, 2006. Um, she was a um, psychologist, and she wrote up literally all her case notes and everything got wrote up on this Amstrad PCW. Um, I mean, she was getting on a little bit, and I don't think she really wanted to um, get a new computer before she retired or learn how to use a new computer. So I managed to keep that old. Um, that was a, um, I think it was a 9512, it was one of the later ones. I managed to keep that thing going all the way up until um, 2000, I think it was about 2005, 2006, some, sometime around then I managed to keep that thing going and she retired at that point and uh, 
<laughs> bizarrely enough, her um, son bought her a um, Apple Mac laptop <laughs> as a retirement present, so uh, I think she went the Mac way after that. But yeah, I, I'm not, uh, just to say that I'm, I did do little bits and bats with these um, in the past, um, a long time in the past. But um, most of the pro problems I ever had with these was with the um, video circuitry, or with the basically the monitor inside the case and disk drive um, issues. And I can't really remember that much about actually using them. It was more repairing various faults um, that they failed with. Um, but anyway, I'm digressing off that. So I've got this power board um, and video board made up there. And I've dug out, this is actually a um, 3 inch drive out of um, a CPC6128, it's one of my spare ones. I've just put a new belt in it and um, give the heads a clean on it. And I've got that connected up, but I've powered it up from its own, basically I've got an external um, power supply here, which I'm feeding the 5 and 12 volts to this disk drive with. And this is one um, to note if you do want to do anything like this. Be aware that the connect power connector on the back of um, these 3 inch disk drives is actually reversed to the standard um, on a standard 3.5 inch um, disk drive. Um, the standard 3.5 inch disk drive connector like that one will fit. Only problem being um, where that's uh, 5 volts and that's 12 volts on this, the drive is expecting that to be 12 volts and that to be 5 volts. So you could either just pull the connections out of here and swap them round. And that actual, them connectors will fit this drive no problem. It's just like I say, if you plug it in standard, it will blow it up. All I've done is I desoldered the slightly manky. There was one was snipped off with just a bit of wires and there was one hanging off here. Uh, I've just desoldered them off the board for now. And I've just um, shoved it in the end of that Molex connector, as you can see. So we've got 5 volts on that side, 12 volts. So the red is 12 volts instead of 5 volts on the standard colour code you get on a PC power supply. So anyway, I've got um, some power to a disk drive. We've got it all connected up. So we've got power to the board. We've got video out of the board. So we've got a disk drive. And um, I'll power it up and show you what we've got so far. So if we... Uh, I'll swing you over onto the screen. Let you have a look at the screen. Um, I won't power the disk drive up just yet. I'll just switch on the actual um, thing. And bear in mind, like I said, this is a cobbled together circuit to get the video out, so the video's not good. But this is what we're getting so far. We'll switch on there, and we get a screen like this up. That's actually reasonable. We've got a few little lines on it and what have you, but basically that's what we're getting so far. It's definitely it's not just some crap coming off it. It's definitely a graphics, it's definitely a video mode being displayed because we can see the uh, the columns running down like this. So it's not the best um, video signal in the world. Um, we can adjust it, that's why there's two pots on this board. We can um, play with it a little bit. Get it a little bit darker and a little bit, a little bit brighter. That's about the best I've got it so far. But what we can show, I will switch this off now. Now, there's no way we can boot this thing. This is the other thing I know. I can't remember what um, a PCW actually does when you first switch it on before you put a disc in. Does it just come up with a screen like this and it not come up with a prompt or anything? Like I said, I really cannot remember. It's that long since I um, fiddled and faffed about with these things. Anyway, let's just uh, knock that off for a sec. But what I, I have, I've not got any PCW software at all. Um, but I've just found that, which it does say, now it could have been copied over. Uh, it says um, third copy wages on that side, and it says copy loca script on that side. So I'm guessing this has come out of a, come from a PCW. It could have already been formatted over, and it could have Spectrum software, or it could have... Um, could have Tatung Einstein software because I've got a Tatung Einstein. It could, or it could have Amstrad 6128 software on it. Uh, I don't really know, but I thought um, we could use this to try. So basically, I'm going to shove this in the drive. Let me just take you down like that. Because if I shove that in the drive and I power the drive on, I get the drive on light coming on. And if I actually power the um, computer on. We look, the drive light goes out like that. We look at the screen. Oh, hang on, it's not quite a. There we go. 
it does this where the screen flashes like that but the screen flashes in unison with the um, I don't know if you can see that with the um, LED on the this drive now it's not got it's not even attempting to boot but if you look and then we get that we get beep 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 which I presume is like a disk boot error or something like that so I think basically the system is basically working what I really 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 need now is that keyboard if I get a um, keyboard that I can play with now and what I might try and do I don't know how easy this is going to be to do um, I will um, perhaps connect a 3.5 inch um, disk drive up to this and wonder if there's going to be any way I can get some software perhaps an original um, 8256 boot disk would be a nice thing to get if I can get an, eight, five, uh, an 8256 um, image and uh, write it onto a 3.5 inch disk replace this drive with a 3.5 inch drive and we'll actually see if we can get the thing to boot like I say, if you know more about the PCWs than I do, which, like I said, it's a long, long time since I did anything with them, and I don't, I've never had a huge amount of um, input with them, because I've repaired a few in the past. Um, but if people could tell me whether what I'm getting up to now is um, indeed normal from a computer without any software or anything booting on it, whether I need the keyboard in to get any further, um, whether anyone knows any software I can use on a PC to actually create a... Um, a boot disk for this thing would be nice and so I'll carry on doing a little bit more research but I thought I'd do a little video just showing you uh, how far I've got so far because I should really be working on some other projects but uh, when you get a new thing in like this and you, you just want to see whether you can do something with it you, you can't resist the temptation you do have to have a um, a little bit of a play so I'll probably put this away for now actually it can go back in its static bag and um, I'll Away any interesting answers I get off people, what they think um, about how it boots and what I can do with discs and things like that. And hopefully I'll be able to get a keyboard for it and we'll be able to take it that little bit further. So I'm going to leave it there for now. I hope you enjoyed that little update on this project. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.